Praise the Lord. This is Pastor Eldridge Ford of Global Evangelistic Ministry. So glad to be here with you on another Sunday afternoon. It is a wonderful time to be together, to gather together in the house of the Lord. Amen. And even where you are resting and relaxing and preparing to actually hear the word of God, I am grateful that you decided to join us. And I believe that the Lord is going to meet you right where you are. And he's going to give you exactly what you need in order to have the strength you need in order to continue and to find yourself succeeding or in every area of life. Amen. Let's go into a word of prayer and we're going to find ourselves moving forward in the things of God. Heavenly Father, we thank you now, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, that we can trust you, oh God, to handle those things that are invisible. But we also can trust you, Father God, to handle those things that we can see. Lord, we thank you that we can trust you, Lord, that when we call on you, you hear us and you will answer us, Father. God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, that when we pray, Lord God, you, you hear us and you understand our prayers, Lord God, even when sometimes we miss some of the words, Lord God, and we're not able to get things clear, Father God, you're able to meet the need, oh God. God, I thank you, Lord Jesus, that those things that seem challenging in our lives, those things that seem impossible in our lives, oh God, you're able to handle those as well, Lord. Oh, God, there is no problem too big or too small. There is no issue that you cannot uh, uh, handle or put in perspective in Jesus' mighty name. God, I thank you, Lord Jesus, that when we come before you, we can have assurance and rest in knowing that you are for us and you are with us and not against us, Lord God. And God, I thank you, Lord Jesus, that there is no weapon, no enemy, no, uh, no uh, fear, no trouble that is bigger than you, oh, God. Sometimes trouble comes and it seems like it's so great. It seems like it's, it multiplies itself and it seems like it, it exaggerates and it, and it makes itself big. And God, it seems like no one can help us. But God, we trust and we know without a shadow of a doubt that you are our great helper. You are our great deliverer. You are our salvation, oh God. And you promise to keep us and protect us and watch over us, oh God, in these times. God, we put ourselves before you and we trust you with all our life. Not just the spiritual things, but even the natural things. We can depend on you, God, to help us to make good decisions on the job. We can, make, we can depend on you, Lord God, to help us, Lord God, in our studies. When we're studying and we cannot figure out what we need to figure out, we can stop and take a moment and seek you and seek your face to get an understanding. Oh, God, in all our ways, we can acknowledge you, Father, and you promised that you would direct our path. Lord Jesus, you're trustworthy. You're faithful and you're loyal. Oh, God, I thank you, Lord, that it, within our hearts and in our minds, we will acknowledge this and give our total dependence to you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Not long ago, we had found ourselves, we were in a time of prayer. We were doing 30 days of prayer, amen. We're in 30 days of prayer even now this month. For those of you online that want to join us, inbox me and I'll help you get the information. Inbox me. We're not going to post it, uh, but inbox me and I will help you get the information that you need concerning the 30 days of prayer. We're in 30 days of prayer now. We're praying every single day, every day. Uh, we're on prayer, on the prayer line, and we're actually praying. And so it was, this was some time ago when we found ourselves ending. We was at the end of 30 days of prayer. And what we found was is each night we would gather together via media conference line. And uh, the church leadership and parishioners, uh, we would just get together and just begin to pray daily, seeking God's face. And some would get on the telephone or on their laptops and pray for specific prayer points and prayer requests of the people on the line. We had a prayer request this night that was so urgent, it felt that we would not only need to pray, but we would immediately have to take action after the line was over. So what we did was, there was what, this, what, what, what it was is, is that there was a young family needing urgent care after we had prayed uh, for their situation. And, and what we were going to do was we were going to take the next step, go to the next level and actually make sure that whatever was needed would be handled after the prayer was over. 
Well, we finished the prayer line and we were ready. We were looking for them. I had their numbers and I called them and no response. I called again. I called him. I called her. We're trying to figure out. We're trying to make it work. We're trying to see what's going on and no response. We were ready for the extra mile to go. We were, we were going to take that extra mile and go a little bit further with them. We were going to do a little bit more because we knew that it was necessary. But tonight, out of all the nights, I mean every other night we could get them. But tonight was the night that we was ready to help and we had everything in hand and we had, you, you understand what I'm saying? All engines were running, right? All, everything was in, in, moving in that direction to actually assist this was the night we couldn't get them. We had resources in place. We had willingness to go the extra mile. No response. We had prayed sincere, heartfelt prayers and believed God would work things out for them. But we just had set in motion a plan B. We believed God could do it, but plan B was in action, right? Because if, 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 if plan B is kind of like if plan A don't work, we're going to jump in. Uh, literally, we had set plan B in action because if God wasn't able to do what we thought we needed him to do, then we were going to do what we had to do. We learned, later learned that somewhere... Uh, around the same time we were praying, God had met their needs. And what we would do for them would only be an additional blessing because God had fulfilled the whole blessing of what they actually needed. Amen. What we had learned from this lesson was when we pray, we are to believe. And we did not need to do any extra by coming up with another plan to solve the problem. See, God knew their need before we did. God was the one that introduced us to them and, and was allowing us to actually be a part of the process. But at the end of the day, only one person would actually get the glory. It would be God himself. You, so what I want to encourage us today is that when we pray, please know to believe God and recognize that there is no need for plan B. What am I talking about today? I'm talking about no plan B. Amen. That literally that when we find ourselves as believers going into a time where we're seeking to do what God has called us to do, when we're actually seeking God to say, God, what is it that you desire? What direction are you, do you want me to go in? Uh, we're not going to be Mr. Fix-It or Mrs. Fix-It. We're not going to try to put things in play. We're going we're gonna to actually believe God. That it, first of all, that he can answer us. Sometimes we don't even believe when we go to pray that God can answer us. Do you hear me, God? Do I hear you, God? Right? Sometimes those are questions. How do I know when I'm hearing from God? How do I know when God is talking to me? How do I know whether or not God is going to answer? And literally, sometimes, time and time again, we, we begin to think back on some sad time, some moment in life where literally we prayed a prayer, and it may not even have been a proper prayer. Right? I prayed some bad prayers in my life, and I know anybody that's been in the church for a little while, we've prayed some bad prayers. I remember I prayed some prayers that I know God, that I, I can look back on them now and say, I know God wasn't in that prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm talking about, you know what type of prayer I'm talking about. The prayers like, Lord, please let me get away with this. <laughs> and, and, I, and, I, and I'll repent later. Come on, you know the Lord wasn't in that prayer. You know, I'm talking about them type of prayers, right? Some prayers where God was not in it at all. And so we pray those types of prayers and sometimes we pray prayers that literally, that are heartfelt to our heart. And because we don't get the response or the answer or it does not go the way we want it to go, we're crushed. God, why you didn't do this because I asked? Knowing that God's timing and God's answers to prayers and God's non-answer to prayers is all part of his working to work all things together to the good, for the good of those that love him. 
It, it, it is, it, 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 if, if he does everything how we want him to do it, then literally something else might be misplaced or out of order or out of or off uh, track. And so what happens is, is that I want to encourage us today that we would find ourselves, giving ourselves over to God and setting our hearts in place to say, God, there is no plan B. There is no plan B. Now, this don't mean that if you take medication, stop taking your medication. No, that's not what pastor is saying today. If you take medication, you take your medication. Why? Because God uses doctors. Amen. God uses people. God uses those, right? He's giving them the information. He's giving them the knowledge. He's giving them understanding. They've seen enough, right? They understand, right? Uh, right? But I'm talking about those other things that we're looking towards, that we see and that we're asking God to do in our lives. That, that when God, when we begin to get on that track of asking God to move in our lives, to work things out in our lives, that we would actually trust God that he's able to do. Yeah. That we would actually be able to set our hearts and set our minds in a position to say, God, that if, if you don't do it, it's not going to get done. Amen. Do you know that you can actually pray and ask God, what should I pray? You, it, it, it sounds funny, but we can pray to pray. We can ask God, how do I need to pray? Over and over again throughout the Bible, we see that men of God were in, they were, they were put in a position where they were urged to pray. They were pushed to pray. They were, they were led to pray. And depending on how much you pray determines what you're going to do when trouble comes. Right? Because oftentimes if you're not in a, uh, a position of praying on a regular basis, when trouble comes, you're going to, excuse me, I don't want to uh, uh, use this as bad language, you're going to freak out. You're going to actually lose your mind. You're going to not respond the proper way. And so when trouble comes, if you are a praying person, you know exactly what to do when that trouble comes. You, you actually put yourself in position to say, well, I've been praying and I've been praying, I've been praying. Well, I'm going to pray right now. We need to put ourselves in a mindset that we do not become prayerless believers. Yes. Prayerlessness is sin. Yes. Prayerlessness is sin. Uh, Luke 18 and 1 it says this right here. It says then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. Amen. We're to always pray. There are times in the Bible where men of God have found themselves over and over again going to God for the same thing. The Bible talks about Daniel for 21 days that he prayed. I mean, like literally the first day he prayed. The next day he came back and he prayed for the same thing. The next day he came back and he prayed for the same thing. You would say, after three days, Lord, it must be done. No, he continued to pray because sometimes when you're praying, the Lord will allow. What happens is when you get into an understanding, I don't want this to sound real deep. When you get into an understanding of actually learning to pray, what God does is he begins to communicate with you. And there is a time when God will tell you it is finished. You will know that it is done, and that's what they call a breakthrough, right? You will know that it is completed, and that's what they call a breakthrough. And so what happens is, is that there are times we can go into prayer, and we stay in prayer, and we go back again, and we go back again, and if it don't look like it changed, we go back again. If it doesn't feel like it's changed, we go back again. When it doesn't seem like it's going to get any better, we go back again, right? But you got to have time for it, because prayer takes time. I know people, that's why people don't want to do it. Prayer is like work. It's like having a little job on the side, right? After you have done all you've done, and you may not be feeling like it today. You may not be feeling up to it. You may be feeling a little tired. Uh, not now, maybe later. Uh, but literally, you got to do it. Because when we pray, we're actually saying to God, I trust you, and I totally, completely depend on you. Amen. And, and so we begin to, so Jesus, he tells them a parable of, of uh, tells his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and never give up. Amen. Amen. And that's Luke 18 and 1. You, you know, it's funny because uh, a, a Sunday school teacher came into the Sunday school class and, and the Sunday school teacher was there in the class and asked the question and said, what is prayer? 
All the students came up with all types of answers. They said, oh, it's guidance for, to life's decisions. Somebody said it's praise and worship. Somebody says it's repentance. And somebody said, uh, 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 this is very familiar to you. You might have heard this before. I know somebody heard this before. Uh, uh, it was new to me uh, when I heard it. But it says, an uh, acronym for prayer is P-R-A-Y. Praise, repent, ask, and yield. <laughs> Amen. I knew somebody was going to get it. I knew somebody was going to get it. Hallelujah. It is uh, uh, P-R-A-Y. Praise, repent, ask, and yield. Amen. And so what happens is in this class, they begin, the students begin to talk about all these things about prayer. The, the students begin to talk about what prayer really is and how it really works. But can I tell you what prayer really is? Prayer is about a real relationship. Amen. It's more than just a conversation. I know that you understand what I'm saying. A conversation is part of a relationship. Uh, prayer is about a real relationship. Amen. That we are actually coming into a relationship with God. Sometimes, sometimes we're not even sure if God is on our team. You hear me? We, we, because so many bad things have come our way. So many situations in life have approached us. And so many things have happened in the past that we don't know if God is on our team at all. God, please don't get me. Or God, what did I do? Because <laughs> you're about to get me, right? Like literally, you don't know who, who team God is on. And what happens is prayer is about a real relationship. And what I want to encourage us today is, is that any good relationship requires conversation. Any good relationship requires conversation. I remember when I was wooing my wife. I actually took the time. Initially, I started out slow. Amen. I, you can't move too fast. You got to take it easy, men of God. You got to take it easy. You can't run up on her talking about, you my wife. I'm ready for you. No, you got to take your time. And what I did was I actually, I, I called her one day. And then I took a day off. I called her another day. And then I... Took another day off. Then I called her a day. And then I called her the next day. <laughs> then I called her the next day. And then I took a day off. <laughs> then she called me and said, hey, what happened? I said, oh, yeah, this is it. We all now. We all right. Right. Because what ends up happening is, is that any good relationship takes conversation. It takes time. We got time. Listen, we got time. Sometimes we're so rushed, we think we don't have time to come into a relationship with God. Some, sometimes we think that life is moving so fast that we missed out. And God is, he, he's so far ahead of us. And God is saying, I'm here right now. I'm ready to talk right now. I'm willing whenever you're ready. Uh, literally, we have time. We have time to come into a good relationship. We have time to come into a, 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 a conversation with the Lord. Because conversation with God, yes. it, it, the way a real conversation works is that in a conversation with God, when God speaks, we listen. Amen. 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 I, I, you know why I said it like that and left it there? Because we're so used to prayer being us speaking. Sorry. Sometimes we're so used to us speaking and not Allowing God to speak. Uh, there have been so many conversations. Have you ever been on the phone with somebody and they get on there and they just get to rattling? Blah, blah, blah. I got this and I got that and this and that and this and that and this and that. And you say, huh? And you can't get in because they steady going. And, you, and you, you're listening and you're listening and you're listening. And you say, uh-huh. And, and then you can't get in because they keep going. And, and then, then you're listening. And then eventually they say, whew. Thank you for letting me have this conversation with you. I got to go because I got to. You say, what? We ain't even talk. This ain't no conversation. No. Right? This is how we do God. We actually jump in and we talk, 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 talk. This is our prayer life. Talk, 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 talk. And then we jump out. No time. We ain't got no time. This relationship. And then you wonder why God is not talking because you're not taking enough time to hear what he's saying. Amen. 
I want to encourage us that that literally, if you're going to be, uh, this is this is this is a uh, 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 Sunday school one on one. Every believer should actually pray. Every believer should actually come into a time of prayer. Uh, literally, if you took a, a, a survival guide course, if you took a course where, where you, you wanted to know how to survive in the woods and survive uh, uh, in the water and survive in the jungles or the swamps, literally, they would teach you some things, correct? Uh, they, they would probably tell you that if, if you really want to be a good survivor in any type of weather, this is what you're going to need to do. If you find yourself stranded in the middle of the sea, in dangerous swamp or in jungle area, first you must gather everything that you may need to help you stay alive. That's the first step. You gather everything that you may need to help you stay alive and possibly anything that you can grab that if help comes, you can actually signal for help. Right? Amen. Uh, the, the, the next thing that you might have to do is you must find water. And you're going to have to build shelter. Literally, the body needs water over a period of time. And so, so while you're actually gathering things, you're looking for water and how to get some water so you can drink some water and not get sick. Yeah. And build shelter because at nighttime, wherever you at, that's when the creatures come out, right? You need some shelter, right? You need to figure out whether we're going to sleep high or we're going to sleep low. We need to figure out where we're going to be. Where, is it cold? We're going to have to cuddle. And we we got to figure out what we really going to need to do and when it turns nighttime. And then the next thing, finally, what you end up doing is you'll find yourself having to build a fire. Yes. And then food. Amen. These are the things that you need. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm doing Sunday school one-on-one, -on -one and, and if you're going to find yourself actually growing in the things of God, if you're going to find yourself being a good Christian, if you're going to find yourself being effective in, in your Christian walk, you must pray. Amen. You must pray. Prayer is foundational. You cannot get away from it. And oftentimes, those that pray, they don't really do a whole lot of talking about it. They just do it. I think those are the best ones. The ones that don't do a lot of talking about it, unless they're teaching it. I think those are the best ones, right? Because they just get it in and they just knock it out. You, 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 know, you don't want to be asking another believer, can you pray for me? And you don't know whether they're going to pray or not for real. And you don't want somebody to be asking you, will you pray for me? You say, yeah, I hit it later. And you forgot. Listen, life and death is that, you, you understand what I'm saying? There are lives at stake. There are uh, situations that say you need to know that those that you're surrounding yourself with, those that are around you, and what you're doing is you're making time for prayer. We recognize that prayer is fundamental, amen? So prayer is fundamental, right? It is, it is one of the foundational things as a believer. Amen. Now, what we begin to see is that Jesus, what he does is, and I'm almost done, y'all. We're we almost out of here. Jesus, he gives examples of prayer and why we should pray. He gives two examples in Luke chapter 18, uh, starting at verse 1. Uh, and, and, and he gives two examples. He gives an example of a parable of a, uh, a person persistent in prayer. Mm. And he gives a parable of a Pharisee and a tax collector. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so what ends up happening is, is that, and come on, go there with me right now. Luke, uh, uh, Luke chapter 18, I'm going to start at verse 2 uh, through 7, and I'm going to read the first parable. Amen. Amen. Luke 18, 1 says... Amen. I'm going to go back up. Luke 18, 1 says. It says, then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray yes. and not give up. Verse two. He said, in a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, grant me justice against my adversary. Verse four. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, 
I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. Verse six. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And it will and will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the son of man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Now, what we begin to see here is, is that there was an unjust judge. There was a man of authority, power, and might, and he did not care about God, and he didn't care what folks thought either. So that's a, that's a whole lot of don't care, right? That's a whole lot of I, I don't care. And, and what ends up happening is, it says that, 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 that because he did not care, when this woman came to him with her plea, what did he do? He refused her repeatedly over and over and over and over again. He refused her. And guess what she kept doing? She kept coming. He, and, and, and eventually in his refusal, he came to his senses and he said, wait, <laughs> even though I don't fear God and don't care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. She was persistent in what she was doing. She was going before him regularly on a regular basis to tell him her need. Amen. Have you ever done that in life? I know some people in this room have done that in life. I know some people have stood for years for what they had been praying for and they came to see it come to pass. Amen. I know that there are people even now that have actually, uh, 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 even now, we're the very fact that we are on this line, the very fact that we're in this space it was that of a persistent prayer that we prayed to God and God answered amen and it was in his timing and so what we must do is we must not give up that was the point right Jesus said he says I want my disciples I want them to pray and not give up amen. now the widow on the other hand she lived in this town and she just sat in her mind that she was not going to stop I can't stop I won't stop. You know, over and over again, it's amazing how the Bible tells of these different times, these different places, and these different accounts of that Jesus talks about of these different individuals that come with this faith, right? Because he says, he says, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith in the earth? It's something about uh, uh, Jesus telling these, these parables and these stories and it's being written of people that have been rejected. That they, they didn't get it the first time. It didn't just happen for them. It didn't just work out, right? Because uh, oftentimes that's what we're looking for right now. If it doesn't work the first time, if I, if I write the paper and I, and I do the paper and I did my best and I struggled and I put all my effort into it and it says it's not good, yeah. if they don't, if they don't accept that I quit. No, no, no. You go again. Yeah. And you do it again. Yeah. And again. I, I, in school, I please forgive me, I, I feel so ashamed to say this, but in school there was a class that I was taking and I had to take it four times. Four times. And it cost. Listen, it cost. I remember the other students saying that we're doing this, we're taking shortcuts because of the fact that we don't want to pay all that money. I remember other students, they were saying, sir... I, 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 I love the class, the class was good, but I'm gonna bow out because literally I don't believe that I necessarily need this class to go on in life. And then I saw other students, that they was just taking the class, struggled through the class, and they made it through the class, and I said, well, wait a minute, what's the difference, right? And, and, and so then I had gotten to a point that either I was being stubborn, Rebellious or something. Some on the inside said, I need this class. I don't care. I don't care if y'all telling me that it's okay that I just not deal with this class. I don't care if I've actually took it and if I have to take it some more times, I'm going to take it. I don't care about the cost. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But if, if some can get it, I want it too. Sometimes in life, you got to get that just don't quit, that JDQ on the inside that I'm not going to quit until I get what I need. Amen. That you're going to go after it. Hallelujah. It's going to hurt. And you're going to say, huh? You're going to suffer. You're going to shake it off. 
and you're going to take it again. You understand? And I went back again. And I went back again. And I went back. And yeah, I passed that class. I passed that class with an A. Of course. You say, you say, yeah, you passed it with an A. You took it four. Yeah, I better passed it with an A after four times after paying my money. I should have, right, passed it. But it's, it, it's not about that. It's about just don't quit. That you must remain diligent. You must remain steadfast. You must remain focused on what it is that God needs to do in your life. And guess what? You go into the source. When you go into the source, he's going to make it happen. He's going to do it. He's not going to leave you in the place or the shape that you're in. Sometimes we're afraid that if I keep doing this, it's all for nothing. Sometimes we've had so many upsets. We've had so many hardships. We've had so much rejection. We had so many people that let us down that literally we think God is like man. And God is not like man. He's totally different because when he says that he's going to do something, he will do it. Amen. And so what this woman did, she went a natural thing to the judge over and over and over again until she got what she needed. But. And then Jesus says, he says, this is what Jesus tells us now. We, we got to see what Jesus says about this situation because Jesus is telling a story. He says in verse 7, well, well let's go to verse 6. And, and the Lord said, listen to what the unjust just said. Now, this is not, this, he's unrighteous. He's not just. He's not faithful. He don't care. Listen to what he said. In verse 7. And then he says this, he compares the unjust judge to God, who is just, who is righteous, who is loving, who is caring, who is merciful. This is what he says. He says, will not God bring about justice? Will not God bring about justice for his chosen one? Who cry out to him day and night. Will he not keep nothing? Oh, wait, no, no. Will he keep putting them off? Will he keep making them wait? Will he keep putting them to the side? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. Sometimes you got to put yourself in a position to say, God, I'm going to trust you with everything. No plan B. You hear me? You, I, I, I'm going to trust you for this situation. I'm going to trust you. It doesn't mean get assistance. It doesn't mean don't get advice. It doesn't mean don't do what you were told to do. But it's saying, God, I'm going to trust you in this situation. And in the midst of your situation, you know what God is going to do? He's going to begin to send help. He's going to send strategy. He's going to send direction. Sometimes we be going in the wrong direction, trying to get stuff done, and you don't even know you're in the wrong. you you in the fast lane, in the wrong way, going the wrong way. Literally, God will say, no, turn the car around. No, you need to go back that way. I don't want to go that way. I'm trying to get to turn the car around. Go back the other way. And then we'll find ourselves getting what we've been looking for. We'll find ourselves experiencing what we've been waiting for. Do not allow your past. Do not allow your past experiences. Do not allow what you heard other people say. Do you know people talk down on prayer? People talk down on prayer. They talk down on God. And and now it's time for you to pray. And what Jesus said, will the Son of Man, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith in the earth? Will he find faith? And it's about faith. You hear me? Faith is, right? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen, right? Uh, 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 Faith, hope, actually, if you deal with one of the definitions of hope, hope is actually something that you've already received. It's it's already done. You just haven't received it yet. Let me slow down. I'm talking fast now. Hope is something that has already been done You just have not received it yet. One of the definitions of hope is something that has already been done that you just have not received it yet. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, those things that are already done, but you just haven't received it yet. And the evidence of things not seen. 
right? And so what happens is, is that it's about faith. Will the Son of Man find faith in the earth? Amen. Because the more that we actually learn to trust God, the more that we find ourselves going into prayer, our faith is increased. Our trust is increased. Our belief. Amen. The more we find ourselves going before God. Now, that was the first one he talked about. He talked about one, a, a, a woman that literally was persistent in her prayers until she got an answer. But then he goes on and he begins to talk about the Pharisee and the tax collector. Now, now, this is a little bit different because what we begin to see here is that these are the ones that pray all the time. And it's not just enough to pray, but it's your attitude in prayer, how you go into prayer and how you come out of prayer and how you handle the people of God when you're dealing with prayer makes a difference as well. Amen. Prayer is important and God wants you to trust him. God wants you to experience him, but God wants you to handle people well. Amen. And, and not to be big eye and little you when it comes to the things of prayer. I used to work at the church, and when I worked at the church, uh, there, were, there were different auxiliaries that we would see that were, that were taking place. Uh, there was the, 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 uh, the, the Monday night, we had the, uh, the Monday night uh, Bible study, and we had the Tuesday night prayer. And on Tuesday night, we had the prayer, and the prayer was upstairs, and then downstairs, we had the people that dealt with a class called Foundations of Faith. Well, I could stand at the door and tell who was going to prayer. And who was going to foundations of faith? Uh, because those that were going to prayer, they came in frowned up, <laughs> uh, looking mad like they about to knock somebody over. And, and, and they was rushing to get to the prayer room. Uh, and those that were going to the foundations of faith, they were, came and praised the Lord. They were smiling and they were happy and they were giggly and they was like, yeah, last week was great. And we could tell the difference. What happens is don't let your prayer life make you sour. Amen. Amen. What he begins to talk about is that there is a group of people, right? Because prayer is supposed to make us uh, I use the word sour so I can use the word sweet. Prayer is supposed to make us sweet. It's supposed to make us uh, caring and kind. And, and, and it's supposed to make, I know that there are warfare prayers that you got to go in and you got to go fighting. You got to come with your back. You, you understand? You got to come ready with your sword and your shield. I understand that there's a little bit of uh, 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 resistance that you got to have coming into it. Because we about to go to war. I totally get it. I totally get it. I know. I know. I ain't no real soldiers coming in smiling. Right? I understand that. But what happens is, is that what happened in this case was, is that those that were going to prayer, they found themselves looking down on others. The attitude of prayer was off. The attitude outside of prayer was off. And we want to make sure that we actually surrender ourselves. All of ourselves to God that he might bring us into the proper standing of, of what he desires to do in our lives. So verse, I'm going to verse 9, uh, Luke 18, starting at verse 9. Uh, it says, to some who were confident of their righteousness. Amen. Y'all yes. got it, right? Y'all heard that one? Mm -hmm. To some who were confident of their righteousness Amen. and looked down on everyone else. Come on, the prayer ain't supposed to do you like that. Amen. It ain't, it ain't, that ain't the work of prayer. That ain't the work of the Lord. Jesus told this parable. Two men went into the temple to pray. One a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed. God, I thank you. <laughs> Whoo, merciful master. I thank you that I am not like other people. <laughs> Robbers, evildoers, slanderers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and I give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector, verse 13, but the tax collector stood at the distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Yes, Lord. 
Verse 14, I tell you that this man rather than the other went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled. And those who humble themselves will be exalted. Yeah. Amen. I want to talk a little bit, and I'm ending now. I want to talk a little bit about that. When we find ourselves going into prayer, we must monitor. The Bible says, watch yourself. The Bible says to examine yourself, that we do not find ourselves getting off into the wrong attitude, that we do not find ourselves operating in the wrong spirit, right? That, we, that when we seek out to help others, that we do, that we watch ourselves, that we do not fall also into temptation ourselves. Amen. We must watch ourselves, that we, that we be careful that, that, that as we're pursuing the things of godliness, that we actually stay focused on what God's word says. I want to encourage us today that, that, that there is no plan B. There is no plan B. And, and, and so, so, so this is not a, a spanking to say that, that you need to pray, but I'm encouraging the people of God that you need to pray. A Christian life without prayer is poor. Amen. A Christian life without prayer is poor. Do you know that when believers pray, I don't care if you just gave your life to Christ. I don't care if you just learning about Jesus. When you pray, you have power. And the power that you have is the authority that comes from Jesus Christ in the relationship that you're in. And sometimes we don't even know what we have. Amen. And we're allowing the enemy to come and still beat us up. Amen. Knock us down, push us around to bully us. Amen. Intimidate us. You're going to have to stand up. Amen. You, and if you don't know how to pray, you got to get with some other folks that are praying. Listen to their prayers. Yes. Don't easily be offended when they're praying. Does somebody get to praying for you because they, they see something. They see a little something extra on you. What, I see this right here, Lord. Help them with this. Why, should, why they say that? Why they say that? Why they, why they say all that? No, they didn't have to say all of that. No, that, no, no, no. They're going too deep. Uh-uh. And, and then those that have been in church for a while. God, God ain't scared of you using a little wisdom. You hear me? Come on, let me take my time right there. We wanna. I, I talked about it last uh, last Thursday about not killing folks with the truth. We got time. We got time to love on people. We got time to come into relationship with people. We got time to encourage people. We don't have to beat people down. You you talk about everything that's obvious. That you see, you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, her clothes ain't right, Jesus. Help her, Lord. No, you, you're talking about everything obvious that you see. But, but your stuff ain't obvious no more. Folks can't see your stuff that you got because you didn't figure out how to put it away and tuck it and hide it. And, and now they can't see it no more. What we need to do is make sure that we stay in the right attitude, in the right motivation of prayer. We all must pray. and We all must pray in the spirit. And what is the spirit? We're going to pray in the spirit of God's word. Amen. That we're not going to be impartial. We're not going to look down on others. We're not going to treat people as less than. We're going to be accepting. We're going to be loving. We're going to show mercy. Amen. Amen. Even in our judgment, we're going to show mercy. Don't judge. Can't nobody judge me. Nobody can judge me but God. Can't nobody judge me but God. Can't nobody judge me but God. And if God judge you, you'll be in trouble, right? If he really judged you right now for what's going on, right? And so what happens is God uses people. Yes. But we that are spiritually mature, let's say that. Those of us that's been around for a little while. Those of us that, that, that we know we've been in the faith and we're supposed to know something by now. Yes. With love and kindness have he drawn us. Yeah, his, his tender mercies, his multitude, right? And what, what David said, he said, Lord, blot out my transgressions. Oh, God. Oh, God, with your loving kindness, have mercy on me. <laughs> right? Your loving kindness. And God, in the multitude of your tender mercies. <laughs> Come on. He, he, he know how to put it on there. That literally that God is tender and he's merciful, right? And loving kindness. He was, you know what he did? He said the same thing twice. 
but saying it in different ways. He just flipped the words around. Lord God, your, tend your multitude of tender mercies and your loving kindness, right? He, he, he said the same thing twice in two different ways. Can we be wise like that? That when we're looking at our brother and sister, that we love them from that perspective. Amen. That we speak to them and that we honor them from that perspective. Amen. Because God is going to give us time. And guess what? God is going to do the work. It's his work. Yes, we have a part in it. We can disciple. We can love on these people. You see a brother or sister in Christ and they actually disappear. You need to be praying for them. Amen. And somebody need to go see them. Amen. Don't let them just stay away. Oh, they, 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 they just doing, they, they, they doing them. No, they ain't doing them. We need to go do us. We the church. That's why we're here. Amen. We're the church. That's why we're here. Amen. We need to do the church, right? Right? We, we let people do they self when they trouble come and situations happen. They just doing them. No, we, we going to do us. Amen. We're going to show, hey, it's a pop-up. We, we called you about three times and you didn't answer. This is a what, wellness check. We just check in to see if you're spiritually well. Uh, we know that you physically well because we're sitting here talking to you, but we just checking on you. We ain't trying to be nosy. We ain't got to know all your business. We don't need to know everything. Is you all right? Can we pray? Amen. Hallelujah. We the church. Amen. 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 We all must pray. And can I tell you again, no plan B. Ain't no plan B. God is the A, B, C, D, E, F, G. God is all of it. And we find ourselves running to him over and over again, staying consistent and going to him over and over again and making sure that we watch ourselves, that we don't become mean in our prayers. We don't, right? We don't become frustrated in our prayers. We don't become angry in our prayers. We don't pray and pronounce bad things over people. Amen. And if somebody would have said it to you, you'd be highly offended and, 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 and blocking them. I, I'm blocking you that you don't ever call me again. You'd be mad. But you can say it. I, I just had to tell them. I just had to tell them, you know. I had to tell them. Shade it, well, tell the truth. Shame the devil. I had to tell them like it was. Right? And if, and if somebody did you like that, you wouldn't want it. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. What has gotten into me, Lord? Thank you, Jesus. It's you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. We praying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's pray. Um, I believe that there are those under the sound of my voice that have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Even now, I come before you now asking, that, will you repeat this prayer? This prayer is only the beginning. This is only the beginning. This is only the beginning because what happens is, is that when you confess Christ as Lord, this is, that this is the starting of you actually coming into relationship with Christ. It is, it is it, when you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, amen, that you are saved. But now, and then after that, you need to be discipled. But we want to start right here. Will you pray this prayer with me? I believe that if you repeat this prayer after me, the Lord will begin to turn things around in your life. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus please forgive me, please forgive me of, all of all my sins. Lord, Lord I, believe I believe that you died, that you died and rose again. Lord, Lord, save me. Save. I, receive I receive my salvation, my salvation. Now. now. In Jesus' name. name. I'm going to pray one more prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord Jesus. God, I thank you, Lord, that you're calling us to be prayer warriors, intercessors, Lord God. Those that would stand, oh God, and pray, oh God, for others and for ourselves, for our loved ones and our family members, Lord Jesus. God, I thank you that we would walk in the authority of Christ. I pray that we would be, become skilled in your word, Lord Jesus, that we would pray appropriate prayers, right prayers. Lord Jesus, I pray, Father God, that we would not become proud or puffed up or arrogant in the process of learning to pray, oh God. God, I say thank you now, Lord Jesus. Use us as those that will pray, Lord Jesus. Use us as those that will intercede, Lord God. Use us as those that will stand in the gap, 
Oh God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you in advance, oh God. I thank you, Lord God, knowing that you are able to do these things and it is done in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I am so grateful for you joining us. Listen, uh, one of the things that I know is, is that when, 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 the, when that prayer goes forth, somebody gave their life to Christ. And listen, all I can say is, all heaven rejoice, all heaven rejoice, all heaven rejoice, all heaven rejoice. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. All heaven rejoice. Two things I want to encourage you to do. The first thing I want to encourage you to do is get your Bible, begin to read your Bible, begin to take in the scriptures, amen, begin to let, and if you got to listen to your Bible, uh, it's a trend going on, folks are playing their Bibles while they're watching TV, I mean, the people, while they're washing dishes, people are playing their Bibles while they're actually uh, washing dishes and, and, and they're going for walks, they're listening to the scriptures and allowing the word to, to just sink in and, and get all on the inside, amen, they're listening to different versions and different variations of the scripture, amen, but it's going forth, listen, I want to encourage you to read your Bible, I want to encourage you to listen to the word. And the second thing I want to encourage you to do is don't do it alone. You don't have to do it alone. Amen. Do it with somebody else. Amen. God uses people. Amen. God uses people and God will send those. Pray that God will send the right people. I pray that God will send the right people into your life that you might find yourself getting the right learning, the right teaching. Amen. In Jesus mighty name. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your people. I thank you for the grace that you've placed upon their lives. May God bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you. Until next time, God bless. Amen. Amen.